Hey guys, Kev here, and uh, it's unboxing time. So I have these one, two, three, four, five, five boxes here that came in today. Um, so we can check them out. Uh, the, oh, what do I got? Okay, so this one's first. Let's do that. Because this one's not actually mine. So uh, as you guys may know, I proxy for some people who live in Canada, and um, this is one of them, Todd Carr, he's a great dude, uh, you guys might see him in the comment section, or when we're doing live streams, he's in the uh, in the chat, uh, great guy, and um, he won a giveaway from Gon's Knife Reviews, it'd be interesting if this turns out to be the knife that I donated to Gon's, but <laughs> we'll see, um, unboxing knife is the surge leaf i'm loving this thing so funny sometimes you just don't know guys like i totally did not think i would love this um this knife and i do by the way i think i was watching an unboxing i don't know whose it was but they were asking like does anybody else ever slip out of this cut when they open these um small priority boxes and yes I do the same thing. I always slip that cut out. Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding me. It is the same one. <laughs> That's too funny, guys. So I think this is actually the knife that I donated to Gons. Or no, I did well, I didn't donate it actually. Somebody won. They won it a giveaway of mine, and then they wanted to pay it forward. So I take that back. It was actually a viewer. Shit, I can't remember his name. Doug, maybe? Uh, who won, and he wanted to pass it along. And then Gons uh, was looking for something to give away for his 100-sub giveaway. And uh, and this was the knife. How great. It's hilarious. And then here's the stickers I threw in. That's freaking hilarious. Uh, then I guess he added a Band-Aid. And we have some Hanks, which is cool. Interesting Hanks. Ooh, that's an interesting feel. I don't know if that's microfiber. It feels cool. And Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda Hank. I don't know who makes these. There's nothing on them, but uh, that's cool. So this is all for Todd Carr. I don't really want to even open the knife. Uh, I guess I have to anyway to ship it. So where did I put the... Uh, beer. This is the uh, More Mylea. At least I'm pretty sure. Yep, <laughs> that's great. So yeah, he won the more my Leah. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, um, but there it is. ARRPM nine, really nice scales. This one I believe, yeah, had a really good detent. Nice and snappy, good to go. Yeah, the only thing that I would uh, change about this knife is I would contour the scales. Now that would make it more of a seventy dollar knife than a $50 one, so I get it, um, but that's just my take on it, but absolutely a fantastic budget knife. I had one for a while. I ended up uh, selling it or throwing it into a deal. Um, I just don't carry a lot of budget knives. Um, I have a couple, like I have a couple Ashers I really like, um, but those even have started to become not, they're still budget, but you know, like titanium and stuff, they're a bit nicer. Um, and then I have a, um, Kubi Royal, Royale with cheese. And, uh, I love this knife. Um, I, I guess, you know, part of me loving it is the fact that Colin designed it. He's my partner on Devo Knives. Um, but, uh, even before that, I really liked the knife. So that one sticks around. And then I have a Best Tech Lizard because it's, uh, got my, it's got left EDC douche number one lasered on it, which is pretty cool. So anyway, uh, next up, Lynch Northwest. So I actually uh, unboxed a package. I don't know if I recorded that or deleted the video. I don't know what happened, but they sent me the wrong thing. So um, I ordered two left-handed 20.5. Clips. I guess they fit the 20 too. It just says 20. 
I never paid attention to that. Um, and I guess I should make sure that they would fit. These look weird. Oh, was I doing it wrong? No, there you go. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, right there. I think it's fine. Let's just check. Jesus, Kev. Now, the thing is, I had four 20.5s. Um, yeah, this would fit. Just fine. Um, so, I had four 20.5s, and I ended up... Um, because I was going a little crazy, right? Technically, I still have three. I bought another one uh, in a shark's foot. Recently, that was D2. It's a cool uh, Lynch sticker right here. Dig that. Oh, we can leave it on the table, I guess. And then we have a note. That says, sorry, Kevin, uh, for the goof. And then it's signed by Casey, which... Uh, they sent me righty ones the first time on accident, which to me, honestly... Uh, I just contacted them. They shipped the lefty ones out, I think the same day. And that was like Thursday or Friday. And I got them today. Today's Monday. Um, so I, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. And then, uh, I just said, do you want me to send back the righty ones? Um, and they sent me a label. I think had I not said anything, I would have just been able to keep them, but you know, they sent these right out. There's no reason for me to keep them. That's, you know, $80 basically that they, I don't know how much these are, 30 maybe. So it's like 60 bucks that they would have lost just because I kept them. I'm at Coconut LaCroix and I see no reason to do that when I can return things like that. I do. Uh, it just makes sense. So anyway, I had four 80 20.5s because I got real excited after this one, and uh, I wanted to have a shark's foot that was all blacked out. So I bought a shark's foot, um, and I got toxic scales for it. Um, then I sent that to the knife modders to get blacked out like this with Cerakote, and I actually had two of these already for Lefty, one that Backpack B gave me, and one that I bought, or I forget how I got the other one. Um, and... I sent those along, so they're getting coated as well. So I'll have a clip for this one that is Lynch and Deep Carry and Cerakoted. And then I'll have one for the uh, Shark's Foot that I sent them as well. Then I bought another Shark's Foot because I saw it online somewhere. It was like 200 bucks. Somebody on Instagram was selling it. But it came with white storm fat carbon scales. And so I was going to get that one. And then I was thinking, hey, I'll Cerakote that. Then I bought a D2 shark's foot when Knife Center dropped them because I got all excited about getting um, the D2 version because I figured if I coat it, maybe that'll be better than the Sauce 10, right? But then I was thinking about it and I was like, do I really need four? Like, I barely carry the one. So my thinking is I'm probably just going to keep two. I'm just going to keep one shark's foot and one clip point. I'll keep this one because I really like how this looks with the Arctic Fat Carbon. And then I'll probably keep that shark's foot that they're coating now. And I'll put, uh, I'm supposed to be getting 80s fat carbon scales. And I'll put that on those, th uh, those on that one. And then I'll probably sell the, the rest. I sold the D2 one already to Backpack B. And then uh, I think I have somebody lined up for the White Storm one. So anyway, long story short, uh, I basically have these two. I, I don't really need them anymore. I ordered them a while ago. Um... So I'll probably just be giving them to buddies or whatever that are left-handed and have, you know, 20s or 20.5s. So anyway, that's that. Next up, more fat carbon. <laughs> this is from uh, Kvist Bladeworks. Uh, Jacob is an awesome dude. And he made me a couple of scales. So let's check it out. Well, shit. Last thing was the counter bore, and I put a click, I don't know what this is, a clinch something on the wrong, on the wrong one, and clicked on the wrong one, I guess is what he meant, clicked, I don't know, maybe he does it on machining, I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything, oops, free scales, <laughs> enjoy, so yeah, um, he was making me these lefty ones, because I'm kind of his uh, tester, 
for lefty stuff, which is really cool. Let's put these stickers out. Jacob is an awesome dude, guys. Um, if you haven't checked out Kvist, please check out Kvist Blade Works. Um, he makes the variant, which is a dope-ass knife. Let me grab it here. There it is. Um, this is the PE made by QSP. Uh, I really love this knife. The only thing that I don't um, love about it is the lock bar access. It's just, it's it's kind of tight in there and it kind of, you got to use the corner of your nail. That's my only downside to it. I have a custom of it with purple haze fat carbon that I absolutely love. That one is out on loan right now with uh, Knife Nerdery. So that's why I don't have it here. Um, but anyway... He uh, made these, they're actually full lefty. So there's no um, filler tab needed for the right hand uh, the right hand side. So like I said, I'm kind of his lefty tester. So I get to check these out. And basically he said something was up with the counter bore. He said, I swear he said I could see it. But he, he said he couldn't charge me because of it. I don't know if he's talking about that orange area right there. It's like black on this one, but that could just be the scales, right? I told him, like, it might be hard for me to even see what the hell you're talking about. So, I don't know. I can't even tell. So maybe I'll figure it out when I put it together, right? And I may do a video after this putting these scales on. Uh, I wanted these Mars Valley ones because I wanted to try the um, the orange fat carbon. I've never tried the orange version of fat carbon. Um, and I thought it was a good opportunity. I don't really love... I like the red, but it's just not my jam jam. And I'm not really an orange guy, but these look absolutely fantastic. So I'm stoked that I went with these. Um, so yeah, so we have these PE scales. Keep an eye out for a video on that. Probably be filming it right after this. So there's that from Jacob. Shout out to Quist Blade Works. All right. Next up, we have a package from Brian Nadeau. So this, oh, got it all the way through. This is actually my, uh, mini Tempest. Ah, oh, he used penis. God damn it. God damn it, Brian, you and your penis. Um, so hang on, let me make sure there's nothing in here, like address wise or anything else. I don't think he would be doing that. Nope. All right. So this is my mini Tempest in the, um, drop point black PVD with gold matter, um, dark matter. So I guess it's gold, dark matter. Uh, fat carbon. This is the one I got that's um, with the blue and the plain tie. And I just really like this knife. <laughs> so I wanted two and then I didn't know what I was going to do. But this one had an issue. The detent nub was not dropping into the blade. And he said normally he would have replaced it. I sent it to him and he said normally he would have replaced it. But he didn't have one to replace it with. So I guess he's completely sold out and doesn't have any for warranty, which is weird. But So he said he had to adjust the lock bar. And he said it's super snappy now, which is good and bad, right? Like, I'm worried that it's going to be too strong. So um, I am a detent diva. So it looks solid all around. Still looking good. Let's... Oh, damn, that's strong, yeah. And I thought it would affect the action on the clothes, and it does, kind of. But, obviously, I haven't, you know, messed with this myself. Um, but I really like that this one, you know, it basically drops shut. And that's because the D10 is tuned perfectly, and then the nub actually drops in. On this one, he had to adjust it. Um, so basically, he had to push that lock bar over, is what I, is my assumption. Um, looked like it might have been off-center a little bit, too. Uh, I think it's 
good. I think it's okay. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, it looks the same. Yeah, it lost. It was, this thing was like really drop shut, this one. More so than this one. So I don't know if that's um, pivot tension or what. Like he could have just cranked it down. But I, uh, I might even be feeling movement there. So I'm probably going to take this apart and try to put skiffs in it, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm going to see what happens. But, yeah, it. I get why he had to do it. But it kind of doesn't... Um, for me, it doesn't alleviate... It, it just caused another issue. Like, the lock bar is now stiffer to move out of the way. You don't get the drop shut action. You know? Like, I can feel the difference. It's pretty massive, honestly. Yeah, it's snappy, and you can reverse flick it, so that's good. And I'm sure most people probably, if you didn't have this one, you'd probably be like, yeah, you know? Um... I don't know, maybe I can adjust it myself. I also haven't, like, put in skiffs in or flicked it much at all. It is definitely snappy. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah, it's way stronger, that detent. But you hear that one really snaps out. Definitely not doing a finger roll, am I? I mean, I like how it pops, but... That's kind of where it ends, because it, I don't know. You can't, you can't get enough to flick it like this, where on this one, you can do that. Um, that's kind of the whole point of the nub, is you get a crisp break, but yet you still don't have to have this ridiculous detent. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh I'll, uh, I'll think and mess with it or whatever. This is enough time I've spent on that. Um, all right, so the last package is from EMP EDC. Right here. And this is actually my third production run Nimble. Oh, yeah, and I got a Mokutai kit. Forgot about that. So, we have a EMP EDC box here, of course. Put away the leaf. Here's the Mokutai kit. So, um, oh, you get the pivot. It's cool. Look at, oh, it's just a blue pivot. So, I guess with the Mokutai kit, you get a blue pivot. Pivot? Why is one side purple? I don't know. It's kind of weird. That's blue blurple, and that's blue. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, here's the clip is Mokutai, of course, which is cool. I just always wanted to get one of these kits, and I never, I never did. Here's the backspacer. I don't know how good the lighting is for you to see it. And then here's all the screws. And I believe that little guy is the insert screw, which is important. And it comes with standoffs, too. Okay, so yeah, your hardware is just blue. Which is interesting. Because I think um, the version I got actually has blue already. Yeah, perfect. So here it is. There's your stickers. It's number 303, third production run. I got the black PVD. 
with blue accents and i thought it would probably since it's already got blue accents maybe it would go well with the moku tie um like maybe this would go well like that right so honestly on this i really would only have to change the backspacer and the clip because this hardware is blue, right? It's just a set of blue, I think. It's the same color anyway, so I don't really need to mess with anything else. Unless I'm mistaken somewhere, but I don't think I am. Uh, that would make things easier. I also have a... I also have a black set of hardware I got that I was thinking of putting on my, I was thinking about putting this on my original Nimble, um, but it would be kind of cool to just have all blacked out too, right? Blacked out would look good. Even if I just did the backspacer and the clip again, you know? So I have uh, lots of options here. For what I can do. I can also just leave it alone. I have a reverse tux one as well, but I don't really know what I would change on that one. That one's kind of the way it is. So between the bronze, like the the original frag version, which is like black. It's not this. It's dark tie. Um, and then it has uh, gold accents or brass accents. Between that one and this one, I can kind of piece together whatever I want. 303. Centering is dead nuts. Oh, okay. Man, it feels good to have a nimble in the hand again, man. I haven't had one. What? I haven't had one in a while because um, they're all loaned out right now. Well, tiniest bit of play, but look at that drop already. Like, hasn't even broken in. Um, this detent... Oh, there's a lot of detent lash. Look at that. Yeah, that's not good. So, um, I'll be talking to John from EMP EDC about that. Um, that would drive me absolutely bonkers. You can actually push the blade down, which is weird. Um, so, I can check. Obviously, he might want me to just take it apart. And see if there's something going on in there. Sometimes it's just a burr or something weird. Um, maybe something in the detent hole is possible as well. Um, otherwise, I really dig the PVD. Uh, it's kind of cool to have that. This is the only one I wanted out of the run. Because I already had the original Nimble and the Reverse Tux. Uh, the only other option really I think was the uh, Stonewash Stonewash. And I just... I don't like stonewash blades all that much, to be honest. Um, no lock rock. Is there any stick? A little bit of stick, but that might be gone already. Uh, so, yeah, I'll see if there's anything going on inside. Um, and I'll talk to him about it. But, uh, yeah, nice to have one back again, even if it's only for... A day and then i have to ship it back to get a new one or something but um yeah i like the blue color on it i think it looks pretty cool on there um and the contrast with satin is cool i just love a satin blade and and it looks like qsp is getting better at that belt satin although i guess it kind of looks just like the first one i don't know uh, I'm excited to get my prototypes or our prototypes from QSP as well. They're in the mail. Um, all the opening methods work. I think they did strengthen the detent a touch from the first production run, which is good because that's kind of improvement you want to make, um, you know, constant quality improvement. I do wish you had switched to T6 at some point or T8, sorry. All these screws are T6 except for the pivot. Uh, it would be nice, but, you know, you can't have everything you want. And I think maybe just the holes for the screws wouldn't allow for a T8. He'd have to do a bit of a redesign, and maybe he didn't want to do that until he's ready for a version 2. 
Um, but yeah, I can tell the detent's a little stronger because it's fighting me on the on the reverse flick left-handed. Not like fighting me in the sense that it's hard. It's just I can feel a lot more. Um, I can just feel it takes a little bit more to get it out, which is interesting. Um, so I wouldn't want it any stronger. But if I go down just a little bit, it's perfect. Um, up here, you know, just a little bit stronger detent, but it's still manageable. But that means right-handed, you're going to get a much better detent, yeah, than the original, which was a bit, uh, a good bit lighter. So, um, yeah. All right. I will um, contact John about the detent lash because that, again, is... I mean, you could see the, the blade moving. Let's see. Well, hopefully you can see it. There, you can see it really good. And that to me is just super annoying, especially like with the flipper. Well, I can't do it with the flipper. So maybe that's how he tests it and that's how he didn't catch it. Uh, but with the, with the finger flick, I'm like jiggling here before I shoot it out. So uh, I will look into it. If there's anything to update you on after I take it apart, um, I will let you know. Uh, otherwise, just assume it's taken care of because John is a good dude. Uh, we got my two kits. I got my Mini Tempest, which, sheesh, it's another one I'm not quite... I don't know. I just like being able to do the cool kid tricks, and I can't do it with this. Jeez, that hurt. Um, and it really made the lock bar stiff. Like, disengaging it right-handed is... It's just a bit more of a chore. Um, so... I'll talk to Brian, I guess. I'm just constantly talking to makers about stuff like this. Um, I can't, I just can't win. It's like, I'm a, I'm a lemon magnet, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm going to start ordering two of everything just so I don't have to <laughs> deal with that shit. Uh, it's crazy. Um, this one right here is dialed in. So that's good news. You know, worst case, I can sell this one or something. Um, if you got this not having handled this one, I think you'd be perfectly fine. I just have to disclose that it's a bit of a stronger detent. So I'm sure there's somebody out there looking for one with a stiffer detent. So, um, anyway, that is everything guys. Um, I have unboxed a shit ton of stuff here and, um, I am pumped. So I love you guys. I appreciate uh, you guys watching truly do uh, subscribe if you like uh, hit the thumbs up button do all that cool stuff leave me comments if you have anything you want to tell me about this okay um, lately I've been getting comments about other shit like whatever I got into a whole thing today with a guy about the intro um, he like gave me shit because the intro music was too loud um, and then who needs an intro YouTube doesn't recommend you have an intro they recommend you have a catchphrase and i'm like dude like this is a hobby for me like don't <laughs> like i i forgot to turn the sound down on the on the intro for a batch of videos which i told him that um and it's like <clears throat> i have an intro because i wanted an intro and my good buddy made a badass intro for me so i put it in front of the video skip it if you don't like it um but I don't need, like, I, I get it. You want to give me feedback, that's fine. But he, he wasn't just giving me feedback. He, he was being a dick about it in the comment. Like, if you read it, it came off like a dick. That's all I can tell you. And I was a bit of a dick back, which, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that. And normally I just laugh these things off, and it doesn't bug me. It just, it's like, I'm not, he, like, I don't get paid for this. Like, you, you know, editing is, like, my least favorite part about this. So, you know, pardon me if I forgot to do one thing during that segment of the process that takes 40 hours a week, you know? All right, I sound like a dick now, and I, I'm not trying to come off that way. I just, I love talking to you guys about the knives and the gear and my opinion on them, which I totally want you to disagree with me on, you know? Like, that's perfect. Like, do that. But I don't need criticism on the other stuff that has nothing to do with the knives and stuff. Um, like how my nose is stuffy a lot, 
you know? Like, people who are trying to help me with that, that, like, people have reached out and been like, try this or whatever. That's fine. But people are just leaving dick comments about it. It's just annoying. Like, I don't need that. So, anyway, I'm sure nobody's watching this part anyway. I love you guys. I truly do love you guys. Um, and I don't want you to think I don't want criticism. I do. You guys should know by now if you've been watching or following long enough. That's not what I'm talking about. So, um, anyway, love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Truly do. Um, I love you all. And I will catch you later.